Okay, hello everybody. Welcome back to another planty video. Today is kind of a sad one, not gonna lie. As you can tell from the title, we're going to be saying goodbye to my philodendron, SP Silver, slash philodendron, El Guapo, slash philodendron, SP Columbia, the plant of many names. I've been growing this out for a couple of years now and mine is massive. This is one of my favorite plants in my collection. It is so big and beautiful. I love the blue tone to the leaves and how pillowy they are and how large they grow. They're beautiful heart-shaped leaves. It's such an incredible philodendron to grow. And typically they're crawlers, but mine is growing climbing, which I think is really cool. And that's another reason that I'm kind of bummed out to be chopping this up because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get um, to get the one that I regrow to climb as nicely since typically they do want to crawl. But, you know, my fingers are crossed that I will be able to. So you're probably wondering if I love this plant so much, why am I going to be completely chopping it up and starting over? And the reason is because it has thrips. And it's been struggling with thrips for a while and I thought that they were gone. And this has happened to me like three times now since I think August is when I first discovered that I had thrips. I keep thinking that they're completely gone and then I get too lax and with like the care and checking and everything and then they pop back up again. So this is one of the plants that for some reason has just had them really bad and they're really persistent. And now I discovered last night, most recently, that it still has thrips. And I was like, oh shoot, like what am I gonna do? And I left it in the bathtub overnight and went to treat it this morning, do a treatment spray. And then I just was looking at the leaves and noticing how damaged they are. And usually when you have a lot of thrip damage on your leaves, it's best to remove those leaves if you can because thrips do lay eggs in the leaf tissue. So I had to kind of decide, do I want to sacrifice this plant in order to eradicate the thrips more quickly and have m like less of a threat to the rest of my collection? Or do I want to try to treat this plant and have it risk spreading to the rest of my collection and also just be stuck with damaged leaves that I'm, I'm kind of disappointed in? So I decided it's probably for the best to just chop it up and it's also reaching the top of its moss pole so I would kind of have to make a decision of what I want to do with it soon anyways which I mean I probably would have extended the moss pole or taken like air layered or taken cuttings or have done something to preserve the leaf size and everything but um you know unfortunately that's just not going to be the plan anymore and yeah we're going to be chopping this plant up. I was super bummed out this morning about this. I'm feeling a little bit better now, but um, I feel like I just haven't been taking great care of my plants lately. So this is just kind of what has happened because of that, because I wasn't on top of checking and treating and everything. Um, I truly thought that it was fine, but clearly it was not. To be honest, I've kind of been feeling down about my collection in general lately, like, I don't know, there, there's just, I feel like comparison is a big thing for me lately, like on social media, there's so many people with just immaculate collections and I just feel like mine is never going to be that. <laughs> but then I think about it and I think about how grateful I am for all of my plants and how I love them even though they're imperfect and um, yeah, I just need to keep gratitude at the forefront I suppose but I feel like when stuff like this happens it can bum me out and I was specifically upset that it happened to this plant because I lost my philodendron my big philodendron splendid to thrips this summer as well I had to chop it completely back to wet sticks and now I'm losing this one and those are probably my two biggest plants and now I've lost both of them for big plants specifically, there's years invested into growing them. Both of these plants, this one and my Splendid, I would grown from just being small plants. So yeah, it is a bit of a bummer, but you know, we're just gonna push on. I'm sure I'm gonna be able to grow this plant back and it'll be fun to kind of restart that process. Um, and it's also just a reminder for me to stay on top of things better because 
stuff like this happens if you don't, unfortunately. Like that's just, that's just the truth of it. So yeah, I don't even know how, like this plant is obviously way too big to even get in the frame, but um, I'm just going to, I don't even know what I'm doing, honestly. Um, I need to remove it from the pole somehow to start with. So I thought I would give you a close up of what the damage looks like on this guy. So it's all of the spots that you see that is thrips damage. So, so sad on this beautiful leaf. But yeah, that's what it looks like up here too. And I think that leaf has it the worst. Well, this one's looking pretty bad as well. Look at that. Yeah, lots of damage on this one actually. This like white stuff on here is from the treatment I was doing. But all the markings are thrip damage. Yikes. Okay, I'm gonna take the Velcro off. That seems like a logical first step. And then maybe I should just cut the leaves off. Yeah, I'm just gonna cut the leaves off because it's gonna be easier to work with once I do that. So sad. Just gonna set them off to the side and then I'm probably gonna just get rid of them right away so they're not lingering here. I really did not expect to be cutting up this plant today. <laughs> oh boy. That's the biggest one. Look at that. <laughs> okay, this is all of the leaves. <laughs> Look at them all. They are dripping from the stem where I cut. They're dripping everywhere, so I'm just gonna run these outside and get rid of them, but yeah. Goodbye, buddy. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna grow you back. Oh. R.I.P. I was kind of thinking like, why do I even want to film this? It's kind of depressing. But this is just the reality of having plants. And I'm sure that so many of you can relate to my feelings of, I don't want to say inadequacy, but just I guess frustrations when it comes to having plants and when things like pests happen and when you lose plants but also falling into the trap of perfectionism and comparison like I mentioned especially in the age of social media so I like to show y'all when things aren't going well and when things aren't perfect and that's the majority of my collection like I'm honestly not I don't want to say I'm not proud of my collection right now, but I feel like it's in the worst state it's ever been in. And I don't even know, I don't even have a valid reason as to why. I just feel like this has been, it's just been a busy and transitional year for me. So yeah, plant care just hasn't, I just haven't been 
doing the best that I can. Um, and I really want to get back into a place where I feel like I am doing the best that I can, but that's just, I don't know. Things aren't gonna be like that all the time. Like life ebbs and flows, you know? Wow, the roots look healthy, so that's nice. Although I don't think I'm gonna be keeping any of them because I don't wanna keep this soil. I didn't think that thrips lived in soil, but I read something the other day that was saying the larvae drops into the soil and um, like grow in there or something. I don't really know. So I don't really wanna keep any soil. I'm probably just gonna do a bunch of wet sticks. These are gonna be like massive chunky wet sticks though. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so my next step, well, you know, actually I'm going to, my next step is gonna be to cut it here so that I can hopefully just detach the vine from the root ball. I'm gonna try to cut the pole here because I think it's just gonna be easier for me if I can just get this pole and vine detached from the big bulky root ball. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna set this back into the pot. Try to contain that. And then I'm going to also get rid of this soil. Okay, so this is what we're working with now this vine along here. Um, I'm probably just gonna try to cut it off of the pole next. I can see where some of the roots are going into the pole, so I'm just gonna try to cut to release it. This plant has always been really, really easy to grow, but I don't think I've ever propagated it. So hopefully that goes well. Hopefully it roots up easily for me. It's not the most ideal time of year to be doing this, but you know, it's just when it has to be done. Okay, it's almost free. Yeah, I've just been honestly kind of having a bit of a bummer last week. <laughs> last two weeks now, I guess. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just the season's changing or something, but I've just been feeling kind of shite, to be honest. Okay, so we don't need that. Next, I'm just going to try to peel all of this dry stuff off of here. Oh, I didn't realize how much pink there was on this stem. Like, it's like bright, bright pink. That's so cool. The reason I'm removing this papery catafil stuff is just because it's probably just gonna rot in a prop box. Okay. And then any of these dried dead roots I'm gonna cut off too. Just anything that is not alive is probably just gonna rot. So that would be all of them. <laughs> Tell me in the comments how your plants are doing. Is your collection thriving? I hope so. If it's not though, we can commiserate together, I suppose. Um, I hope it's doing well, but either way, let me know how your collection is doing because I know this 
transition into the winter can be tough. There's less light, it gets colder, it gets drier. There are many challenges that come along with winter. That's for sure. Okay, so now I guess I'm just gonna take single node cuttings. I'm gonna rip off any petioles that seem like they'll come off. Some of these, oh, okay. Oh my gosh. These big ones, I'm scared it's just gonna like break. Like they're so, hmm, yeah. Maybe I'll just, this is stuck to me. Maybe I'll just cut these ones down. My gosh. Hmm. It's actually almost two years. Well, that's not true. I was gonna say it's almost two years exactly from when I got this plant. And I think it's almost two years from when I ordered it, but I remember it was a pre-order. I got this plant before they were super commonly available on the market. Now these are really common and cheap. Like you can find a lot of people selling them and you can honestly get one for like 10 to $20. But two years ago, I had to pre-order mine and then I got it in January, I guess of 2020, wait, 2020, we're going to be going into 2024, so 2022, yeah, January of 2022 is when I got this, time is so crazy, like I can't believe how long I've had some of my plants and how long I've been on YouTube and stuff, I'm trying to get my shears in here, but I might just try to break this, oh my goodness, not gonna happen. Okay. So now here we are, mostly clean stem. <laughs> I probably not, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna keep the growth point either, unfortunately. I just don't think it's gonna do anything. I mean, I could try to keep it just to experiment, but I don't think it's really gonna do anything. It's probably just gonna like mush off. Anyways, we're just gonna cut between all of these nodes now. And I guess we'll end up with a lot of babies. Maybe, since this one is small, I'm gonna do two nodes for that one. Oh my gosh, I think I need my other, I think I need my other shears for this. These are the ones that I bust out for really chonky cuts that I have to make. So we'll cut that there. And any of them that seem really short, I'll probably do two nodes because I mean, I don't need like 10 of these plants. Hmm. Yeah, okay, I guess I'm doing two, two nodes per cutting. So now I have five, which I feel is the perfect amount, enough to have some insurance cuttings, but also not like a million of them because I don't want to cut these up for the purpose of like selling or anything. I just want to create a new plant for myself. This might be beneficial in the long run because now I can put multiple plants. Like I only had the one vine growing in that pot, but now I can have like, you know, three or four vines growing in. So could be fun. But um, yeah, now I have to figure out what I'm gonna be using as a propagation box for this and what I'm gonna use to root, either perlite or um, sphagnum. So let me go have a poke around and see what I can find. Okay, so apparently I don't have a lot of containers on hand right now. So I'm actually gonna be using my perlite container which is for 
perlite that is used and that I'm reusing. So once I boil and rinse perlite, it gets put into this container. But I guess I just haven't been reusing perlite a lot. Most of the perlite I use just goes into potting mix. So I think I'm gonna be fine without this box for a couple months or however long it's gonna take. Um, and this will give these guys lots of room and everything. So yeah, I'm gonna be using this container and I have my perlite right here. So just gonna dump that in. Okay, I had to do the dump and run because I didn't wanna be sneezing. Anyways, I'm just going to lay these down in here now. This growth point is ridiculous, but I'm low-key curious what's gonna happen. Just gonna wedge it in there. I usually try to, oh, that's sticking up too much. There we go. I usually try to like kind of cover them with perlite, but not fully cover them. You know what I'm saying? And I try to find the growing eye and have that facing up, but like there's one on both sides on this one, for example. So it's not really that big of a deal how you lay them in here because they can always be moved. If you find that growth starts shooting out from one part, then I just come in and I just move them so that the gro growth is facing up, you know? And this little guy. And then I'm definitely going to water this with Super Thrive water, or I guess fill up this box with Super Thrive water. How crazy is it that that's what's left of that plant? Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna go mix up some Super Thrive water and I'll be right back. Okay, here's my Super Thrive water and I'm just gonna pour it in here. I fill it up until I just see a small layer of water on the bottom. I haven't made a Perlite Pro Box in so long. I used to always make these. I used to always have like two of these going at all times. I'm just gonna do the whole bottle. So mine is filled up to about here, which is pretty good and I probably won't have to fill this up again. So now I just pop the lid on and then I'm gonna put it under a grow light. The only other thing to keep in mind, you want it to get bright light, but you also want it to be somewhere warm. Um, so that could be a challenge at this time of year. You don't want to put this somewhere cold. Warmth is really important to root cuttings um, or for like any, any propagations in general, for plants in general, honestly, but especially baby plants. So um, yeah, this is going to be going in the office and we do have the heat on in there, so it should be warm enough. Look at the perlite dust. Okay, the only other thing I'm gonna do, I'll show you guys where I'm uh, where I've put it in a second, but um, I want to make my label because I've been really good at labeling my propagations lately. So I want to keep that up. The date. Okay, so this is the shelf where it's gonna go. 
and I have a grow light for it. So let's turn that on. There we go. Really bright. These are just cheapy grow lights off of Amazon that I use for my little propagation shelf here and they work well for it, honestly. The rest of my propagations look like they're doing really well. That's variegated Frydeck corm in there. So I just have to put the labels on here. There we go. So that's where he's gonna live for now. I will of course update you guys when anything happens. Wish him good luck. <laughs> Sorry to bring depression hour to this video, but sometimes it just be like that, you know? Hopefully back to happier content soon. Um, I have been meaning to film my plant tour, but I don't know why I'm like down about that too. I think because I'm not feeling great about where my plants are at. I don't want to film my plant tour, even though I just need to freaking film it. Like it's fine. <laughs> the plants don't need to be perfect. so. I kind of need to get over that because I've been wanting to film it for like two months now and I just keep pushing it off so I'm really sorry about that but I will get it done soon. I hope that y'all are doing well. Thank you so so much for watching and thank you so much for all the nice comments that you always leave me. They honestly just cheer me up so much, make me so happy and make me feel so appreciated so thank you for that. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I will chat with you guys soon and I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.